Hey guys, welcome to Pellets of Bits. Hey, today we got a pork butt. As you can see, it's absolutely beautiful color. We got so much juice, it's tender. I can already tell you right now. The whole idea about this video is how to set up your Weber 22 inch kettle for success. Alrighty, to get started today, it's not necessarily how we season the pork butt as much as it is how we work the Weber kettle. It's funny, when I first started my YouTube journey, nobody could care less about how I ran the kettle. Now I'm getting all kinds of questions. My kettle runs too hot. How do you do your fire? Um, explain more of the two zone system. And there's tons of videos out there, not just mine. So I didn't make it up. It's just the way you learn to cook. Okay. So today is more like an in-depth view of how I would set up a kettle. It doesn't mean it's right or wrong way. It's just my beliefs. For me, there's really two trains of thought. Okay. First of all, I like the idea of keeping a pan there. It just keeps the mess from running down the side of your grill. Um, you can avoid it if you want to, but to me, I like it. So that is going to be kind of like the, our, our idea of separating the coals. So now the coals cannot go here. Check. I call it a lazy man snake. Other people can do like a true style snake. The snake is the idea. You start the head and it burns all the way through the body and it finishes up at the tail. So some people will measure out the charcoal and make it absolutely perfect all the way around. I'm more lazy. I just put the charcoal on the sides and kind of make it look uniform. Start the head and let it eat around. When you're dealing with a long cook, there's no doubt that the difference, one of the differences between this kettle and my Weber Summit is the amount of fuel that it takes. The Weber Summit's bigger, it can hold more fuel. We're definitely gonna have to restart the snake. So what I do is once the charcoal burns all the way down, I just open everything back up, take the lid off, and then I add my charcoal this way. And then if the fire is here, it just eats back up the way it came. So that's the plan today, okay? I prefer using uh, briquettes, not lump when I do this. I can throw in some lump if I need to, because we can offset it with some wood chips, some wood chunks and stuff like that. The reason is you get more consistency. I don't care if you use lump or uh, briquettes. I do feel like there's a perfect application for both and I think they both can intermingle. Um, so I'm not opposed to using either one. If you do use lump, you gotta be careful how much lump gaps there are versus how much buildup there is. You know, sometimes lumps can be pretty big. So when you're doing that and you're worried about your temps, you know, you can have some severe spikes. Using briquettes, you're a lot more consistent and that's why people use it. So with that being said, I think we're gonna get our grill started. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start off with a nice bed of consistent lump. No big pieces, nothing like that. And this is why I call it lazy because it's really not gonna matter one way or the other. From there, we'll top that off with some briquettes. Next thing, I got some wood chips. I'm just gonna lightly sprinkle these around. And this is gonna burn as the snake eats, as you can imagine. Just throwing that wood flavor sporadically in there. Then this is oak chunks. Just hedging our bed on size. It'll take a while for this to eat as the grill warms up and this will be the first thing that it hits and then we'll be able to go smooth sailing from there. I'll have four briquettes right there. I take like half of a cube. Whatever you want to start it with, that's up to you. Put your fire starter on top. Like that. And this is where it happens, right here. I think this is where a lot of people get in trouble. Only a small amount of charcoal. We're talking about maybe eight to 10 briquettes total. I think the biggest mistake I see is people starting too much charcoal too fast and then it's hard to overcome, right? You can only adjust your temperatures as much fuel as you have lit. So if you have the whole chimney lit and you pour it in there, it's extremely hard to adjust the temperatures. It's just too much force. So doing it like this, we're gonna start the, the head up here, let it work its way around and it'll start eating. So you'll be able to see that through the video. This pork butt, we've done it many different ways. We've used binders, we've scored the fat cap before, uh, we've used different seasonings. Today we just use that um, plain and generic, uh, we call it Texas that, kind of like a Texas rub. 
um, salt, black pepper, garlic, and seasoned salt. Just keeping it very, very basic today and uh, just letting the grill do its work. We can uh, add some flavor later if we need to. Honestly, it's not gonna matter. However you wanna get it seasoned, however you wanna prep it is up to you. I found that there's no 100% guaranteed method either way. So we just do it naked and then we just put a good plain seasoning on there. All right, you see right here, our coals are pretty hot. That's what you're looking for. Cause this is gonna be the actual start of the pit. Put those right at the head. That's why you don't wanna start too many of them. Use those four briquettes right there. Now you can kind of see the idea starting to take shape. Pan goes in just like that. Since our fire is starting here, I'm going to put the vent on this side. It just helps that smoke come up and over instead of just coming completely out automatically. First thing I'm gonna do is open up the vent. You're gonna to need to learn your systems down here. So this is another big thing that I see is the, not the inability, just the knowledge of not knowing how to control your temps. So with charcoal, you know, the wood is already burnt. So you're not worried about the smoke and all that stuff. This is more or less like gas and brake. Sometimes depending on how much fuel you have, you can leave your damper open completely and shut off this. Typically with a snake method, we're gonna adjust both of them. I like to call it, uh, gas and brake. Okay. You allow the oxygen to come through. That's how your fire lives. And then you can slow it down by up here. Sometimes the, there's so much oxygen coming through that you're going to need to be able to adjust this to keep those low temperatures. We're going to rock anywhere between 225 and probably 300. I know it's a wide swing. We'll probably nail it down. Maybe about 260 would be my guess. That's typically what happens. Um, over here, you see our gauge starting to come up. So I'm gonna start shutting everything down about 225. That'll give us plenty of time to get those coals started. It'll start eating the other charcoal. And then by the time everything settles back down, we should be about 250 to 265, somewhere through there. Hitting close to that 250 mark, so I'm gonna shut my vents. I kind of already have a gauge just by using it often, but you can see right here, we're running about a quarter of the hole. And then down here, Weber does a pretty good job of kind of like guessing where you should put your uh, little thing with jigger at your vent. Um, I like to go in like maybe the width of your stick in from that hole, just kind of jostle it around. It should be about right there. We've been pegged about 250 for the last 15 minutes. You gotta be careful how long you have your lid off because all that oxygen now is going to beef up those coals. It's going to have like an infused of heat. Just right over top. And there we go. Let's let the games begin, the long haul. Alrighty, we're about three hours later. And this is another thing that I see that commonly happens that's a misinterpretation that I think you can create better food off your Weber. The grill lid thermometer is always gonna run different than your grill grate thermometer. As soon as we locked everything down, I got my temperature, temperature stabilized. I went ahead and added another a thermometer just to back it up. The ironic thing is, is what most people are frustrated with typically is my ambient temperature says 226. My other temperature says 252. And then I inserted another one that says 248. So at least these two a little bit closer. I'll show you right here what we're rocking with. I have not opened this at all. What I've done is kept the eye on my um, grill temperature. Um, that is way more important than your lid temperature, okay? So I've only adjusted my vents as needed. And there we go. You see the stake start working its way around, right? It's burned that coal. It's starting to get in those wood chunks. Now it's eaten over. There's my chef's temp. This is my um, Thermapro. And this is my other Thermapro. So this temp right here is reading that fire right there. While it's open, I'm just gonna go ahead and douse the edges with a little vinegar, leave that top exposed. I'm not still trying to render that fat out, so I'm not gonna to touch it. Once our temp stabilize again, I'll be able to relax. I'll stay out here with it a couple minutes just to make sure. I have been able to keep my vent open just about all the way, and I've just been choking it down right here. So that goes back to what I was mentioning earlier. 
you got to find what rhythm works best for you it really really depends on how much food source how much fuel that you're burning at the time so this is not a every single time kind of thing all righty we're about five hours in uh it's about 160 degrees on the inside uh so somewhere between now and 170 degrees we hit that stall i just want to show you a sneak peek before we get to the stall um i've just been rotating the charcoal we still got about you know at least oh about a third charcoal going i've added some wood uh strips from my wood pile because i was out of chunks so we're just letting it cook um while it's open i'm going to, go ahead to uh spritz it one more time you see the color on it's fantastic so now i'm not going to touch it at all um let me just check it one more time make sure we're still burning good Ah. all righty we're rocking that seven hour mark which is what i was expected um i really thought that i had a big enough snake here <laughs> i guess not <laughs> but uh, i thought i'd get the eight hour mark but honestly i'm hitting about 167 168 internally to me that's good enough so this gives you the roundabout idea of how big and how long the snake will last. Um, so if you're talking about truck roast, that can take five to six hours, perfect ribs. You're already done with ribs. Um, so there's really no reason to like add the snake again. So if I was not cooking, if, if I was not doing the video, I would take this, wrap it up in foil and put it in the oven because we're gonna wrap it up anyway. So there's no reason to waste fuel if you don't have to. The oven's way more efficient, way more, you know, like temperature guided. So that's just the way it is. But since we're doing it on the video and I want to show you this method, then we're going to continue on here. So there's all the charcoal is burnt down. So I'm going to nice and easily scrape it clean a little bit. So that top lever, bottom, the bottom, the bottom lever scrapes the ash on the side. Right. So now we got a clear uh, projectory. Um, this is going to heat up the head of the snake now and now it's going to feed this way okay so i'm just while i'm wrapping this this can heat up you know this was smoldering to have your 250 275 now all that energy is going to be because you're uh, adding all that oxygen so we'll just be able to add the charcoal later but i do want to wrap first this is going to help with moisture as well but i like the vinegary taste and then we're just going to throw just a touch of water in there, just on the bottom, not a bunch. Put that thermometer back in there. I'm actually going to use this pan because previously when we did a pork butt on the uh, Pit Boss Titan, I knew for a fact I'd messed it up because I went to go rotate it. And then the aluminum foil ripped in the pellet smoker and then I lost all my juices. So I'm doubling up the stuff now. I like the full bolt method, so I'm gonna stay with that. We don't have to worry about putting wood back there because we're not worried about that flavor. We don't need uh, those chunks or wood chips or anything like that. So that coal's hot. So I have some lump here. I'm gonna try to stay away from pieces like that. I don't need near as much charcoal. Remember, we're at 170 degrees. We only need to go up 30 degrees. But you can see the evenness of this. I'll put that back in there. Maybe add one of those to get going. And basically it's just the reserve, the, uh, the exact opposite. So. Like I said, if I wasn't doing this for the video, I would just wrap it up and put it in the oven to finish. Charcoal's lit underneath. That should be a good way to uh, start it. Same idea applies. Uh, now if it jumps up to like 300, uh, 325, somewhere through there, I'm not gonna panic. I might just adjust the dampers, but other than that, it's, it's self-explanatory. So we're gonna run it all the way through to about 200. 
take it off at 200, let it cool. Uh, let's cool it down to about 160 and then we'll start uh, pulling. All right, we let it cool down just about as much as possible. One thing I want to uh, kind of clarify, I've already edited some of the video. I went back just to double check everything. Uh, the snake method is not the only method. There are other methods to do um, different philosophies, different reasons, different um, um, use of fuel. It's just a method I happen to use and have success with it, so that's why I chose that. So uh, cooking on the Weber 22 is can be extremely rewarding as long as you just follow some simple steps and ultimately the inside temperature of your product is what you're going for. So we reach that magical 200 degrees. I double protected it. I'll see if we can't get some juice out of it. That's what I lost on that pellet grill and I was so mad. Built-in thermometer. Check. Got those little fancy white gloves on. Sometimes you can find them with your latex gloves. Just kind of insulates your hands a little bit. I mean, just shreds like butter. No effort at all. It's hard to beat a fresh off the smoker pork butt. I agree. Wow. Mm. <laughs> Can you taste the difference between this and uh, pellet grill? Let me see. Let me get like a bark. Mm. Is it just me or does it almost taste a little more smoky? Like a little more kind of like woodsy. I think this one does. I think the addition of the lump charcoal, I think the addition of adding the splits that we had saved for our uh, smoker coming and what we use on the Santa Maria. I think the addition of the um, hickory chips, the uh, the oak chunks, mm. I think it all adds to it. Mm. Yeah, start to finish, it is uh, actually nine o'clock right now. So just got done running my three miles. Don't laugh, yes I can. <laughs> so. Yes, you have to, cooking like this. <laughs> yep, and while I was running, I was able to take a shower, cool down, all that stuff. and. While this was cooling down, I was cooling down. So, mm -hmm. able to go in there and enjoy a nice meal. But there you go, there's poor pork. Whew. Really doesn't matter what you put on there. Hopefully, we showed you something for the beginners. I know this video is long. I know it's not for everybody, but typically when we do a step-by-step -step video, I really like to go in like deep and show you like all the truths about it. There's no sugar coating. There's no like editing over and filming and all that stuff. We show you all the goods and bads. So, that is a 22 inch Weber kettle set up like a smoker. Uh, you can do a lot of things with it. That's probably your number one method when it comes to long cooks, ribs, briskets, um, pork butts. That's why I fight back so much when people, when I cook on my Weber Summit and they're like, well, that's not a kettle. But the same cooking method applies. And for me, <laughs> they're like, <laughs> I don't know what they're doing in the kitchen. Them girls having a dance party at nine o'clock at night. We got people over, wait to eat. <laughs> Get back to my thought. So the thought was, I just turned the light on too. That this cutthroat. <laughs> they want to eat. My thought is that's why I take it so offensive, and it's probably the only thing now after doing it for so long that I take offensive is when people say that a Weber kettle is not the same thing as a Weber Summit charcoal grill. I didn't change the name from Weber. Weber did. Now they call it the Weber Kamado. The cooking styles match. Can you do more with the Weber Summit? Absolutely. But the point of this video was set up in a way that you can have success, and we proved that. And it doesn't matter what protein you put on there. That's how you do it, right? So other than that, I'm ready to get moving forward in this series. I'm ready to compare the kettle to my summit. I'm ready to cook some things side by side. So that's what we're going to do going forward. We need to throw in some pellet um, mm. grill videos. We got some lined up. I think we're going to do a uh, red wine and rosemary uh, soaked homemade style roast beef. I think it's going to be fantastic. So what else is coming down the road? I don't know. We'll get there when we get there. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Pound the notification button. Show with your friends. Peace. That's good pork. That is good pork. I'd be on any bun in America right mm -hmm. there. About to be in my belly. Fifties. <laughs> I'll come. Mm.